Good everyone, this is your latest video update on this Tuesday afternoon on Typhoon Jalawat and also another tropical cyclone that has intensified into a tropical storm in the western Pacific of Tropical Storm Iriniar near the Ogosawar Islands, which is the 18th named tropical cyclone of the 2012 season. First, we begin with Typhoon Jalawat or Bagyong Lawin, a North Super Typhoon Jalawat as is being called by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. The system it's last located approximately 580 kilometers east northeast of the uh, city of Kasigur and here in the province of um, Aurora. Maximum sustained winds are at 205 kilometers per hour, with gusts of up to 285 kilometers per hour. The system is currently moving north northwestward at 15 uh, kilometers per hour. Again, this winds are from the Japan Meteorological Agency. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center has slightly higher winds of up uh, to 260 kilometers per hour. Uh, sustained, making this a Category 5 typhoon in severe Simpson scale, our second uh, consecutive Category 5 after Super Typhoon Sanba last week. System, uh, as we've uh, said yesterday, has managed to complete an eye replacement cycle and it's actually intensified to a Category 5. And as you can see in this latest visible image, it has a much bigger eye compared to yesterday. Again, very symmetrical looking system, very beautiful system, uh, yet very dangerous and very scary as well. If you look at that eye, of a 20 kilometer diameter eye, this image is from the MODIS satellite, uh, which is taken roughly three hours ago. It has 250 meter resolution, so very uh, fine uh, detail here in terms of the eye. And again, you can see that stadium effect. Also, you can see those cloud swirls near the surface, and that is the mesovortices usually form in the eye of very strong typhoons and hurricanes as well, giving an idea of how strong the system is um, after managing to complete an eye replacement cycle. And believe it or not, the system is, is seemed to be undergoing another burst of, uh, of another eye wall replacement cycle here, in fact the latest microwave image, while not telling much here because of the low resolution, gives still suggests that another uh, band might be trying to form again and the eye of the storm uh, could uh, degrade once again. We'll, we'll continue to monitor that as we go into the evening hours but for now uh, we have uh, signal warning number one up again uh, has been reissued by Pagasa for the provinces this time for the provinces of Isabela, Cagayan and also the groups of islands of Calayan and Babuyan north of the island of Luzon. This is of 11 a.m. They will have another update by 5 p.m., so another uh, an hour from now. Probably expect them to issue signal number two, uh, perhaps, so stay tuned for that. They are actually expecting Jalawa to move very near the coast of Cagayan by Friday. Now looking at the latest infrared image, again showing the eye, the clear eye of Jalawat and um, still surrounded by very strong convective activity which has actually warmed in the past six hours uh, we no longer see those 80 degrees celsius negative 80 degrees celsius cloud tops which may suggest weakening and uh, could in turn suggest that the hour replacement cycle may in fact be happening once more you can uh, also see that out outflow channel particularly the polar outflow channel has weakened as well in the past 12 hours due to the ridge building in eastern China impinging on that outflow. The grid system remains very strong, very uh, very intense and also if you look to the west here, outer rain band still affecting parts of Bicol region, not affecting eastern Luzon here, not affecting the provinces of Isabel and Cagayan just yet. Um, however again the southwest monsoon though has been bringing some scattered uh, thunderstorms. If you look at the um, radar from the gas so you can see some uh, isolated thunderstorms and rain showers moving in from the southwest uh, to the northeast. Uh, not very widespread, so hit or miss, basically. Um, still, has the potential to bring a quick 10 to 20 millimeters of rainfall in a matter of hours. Uh, moving to the north here towards the Metro Manila area. Uh, seeing some isolated thunderstorms as well, but not too bad. In fact, some of these thunderstorms have uh, been able to produce tornadoes and water spouts. In fact, a uh, report here in Quezon City uh, showed and has been captured, a tornado has been captured on video by uh, several people there. 
much of the rains here in Visayas, going back to the infrared, will slowly move to the north as uh, Jalawat moves northward, uh, bringing, it, bringing with it the uh, southwest monsoon. So perhaps uh, expect rains here across southern and central Luzon in the coming days. Now as for the forecast, uh, system is now moving north-northwestward and will move to the northwest actually and perhaps even west-northwest the next 24 hours. It's, uh, it's the subtropical region eastern China uh, gets stronger. Now by Thursday and Friday, a mid-latitude trough for will move in and dive to the east, weakening this ridge and uh, setting up another weakness, allowing uh, Jalawat to turn uh, northward by Thursday and Friday, sparing Taiwan. And in fact, if we look at the latest forecast tracks from the computer models, taking that northwestward turn and then turning northward. So um, the trough that is forecast to dive in by Thursday is expected to save Taiwan from seeing direct landfall uh, from Jalawat and by Thursday, Friday and Saturday we expect the system to recurve and accelerate to the northeast in response to the trough moving in um, to the north of the system. If we look at the latest forecast from the official weather agencies we begin with Pakasa and again showing you that northwestward and west northwestward turn they're actually expecting this to move very near Cagayan by Thursday and Friday. Uh, so perhaps you see some very stormy conditions if their forecast pans out. They're also expecting this to move generally northwestward and could impact Taiwan. If you look at JMA on the other hand, the Japan Meteorological Agency forecasting this to move northwestward, then perhaps slowing down actually, remaining just southeast of Taiwan for at least three days. So a very different forecast here from the JMA compared to Pagasa could perhaps become a very serious threat for Taiwan as we head into the weekend. Now another different forecast here from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center staying this northwestward, the northward and actually recurves it to the northeast. So much different forecast compared to the previous two official agencies. Um, again largely moving well east of Taiwan, sparing the island, sparing the country from uh, strong storms and typhoon winds, but could perhaps recurve and threaten uh, Okinawa Island. And if their forecast pans out, the island will be uh, under the right front quadrant of Jalawat, perhaps bringing the strongest winds to the islands uh, in that region. Uh, the timing would be around um, thir uh, sorry, Friday evening and Saturday morning if their forecast pans out. Uh, however, by this time, expect Jalawat to weaken. Um, again, we need to monitor that IO replacement cycle, see if see what it will do to our system. But for now, Joint Typhoon Warning Center is forecasting this to weaken to a Category 3, at least Category 4 by tomorrow, and Category 3 uh, by Thursday, and e even becoming a Category 2 uh, by Friday and Saturday, but still a very strong system, uh, Category 2, impacting the Japanese islands, so still very much a big, big threat. And again, you can see entire region still under the forecast cone of uncertainty. So anywhere from northern Luzon, Taiwan, and uh, uh, Japanese islands should not let their guard down, should continue to monitor the developments of Jalawa. Finally, move on to the other tropical system of tropical storm Irinyar. That's located approximately 340 kilometers southwest of the island of Iwoto, that very tiny island you can see there. Maximum sustained winds are now at 65 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 95 kilometers per hour. It is moving northward 20 kilometers per hour. You can see in this latest visible image the circulation center is still partly exposed. You may notice more clouds are beginning to fill in over that center which may suggest that the wind shear is weakening. Westerly shear is still around 20 knots or so, so uh, shearing that convection still to the east and you can see in this latest infrared image much of the appearance is still very much lopsided. The strong convective activity is still displaced to the east, but again expect more improvements to occur in the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. So expect the wind shear to slowly weaken allowing the system to intensify much further. 
They can also see in this latest infrared uh, much of the Ogasawara Islands and also Iwato still not under uh, strong rains um, and, uh, and strong winds but we expect conditions here to slowly uh, deteriorate. The system will be passing within 200 kilometers of Iwato by tomorrow morning and uh, perhaps nearing the Ogasawara Islands uh, by Thursday and Friday so expect rain showers and also very strong winds and rough waves definitely along those uh, islands in the next uh, two to three days. Now if we move into the uh, five-day forecast here from the Japan Meteorological Agency and forecasting a north-northeastward turn and another turn to the north and perhaps recurving to the northeast by this time very complex steering factors so we will be watching any deviations and uh, any changes in the forecast Again, JMA forecasting a track well southeast of Tokyo, so not di not directly impacting the region by that time, but still could bring some rain showers and even breezy conditions in that region. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center showing nearly the same forecast track here, forecasting a northeastward turn, northward turn, and recurving to the northeast nearing the Ogasawa Islands uh, during the same time frame as I've said earlier. They're also forecasting this system to become a 16 knot tropical storm, so very near typhoon strength uh, by Thursday and Friday, and also passing uh, roughly around 450 kilometers southeast of Tokyo uh, by Friday afternoon. But again, much of the entire southeast Honshu is still under the forecast cone of error. So any changes in the track between now and then, now and Thursday and Friday, could lead to much bigger forecast changes down the road. And the one thing I uh, want to mention with uh, JMA's forecast is they're actually forecasting Jello uh, Avenir, sorry, to become a typhoon uh, by Friday as it passes southeast of Tokyo. So another angle. Uh, that we definitely need to watch. Joint Typhoon Warning Center is not forecasting this to become a typhoon, but a very much uh, strong tropical storm, 16 knots, so very near typhoon strength. Um, so both agencies definitely expect the system to slowly intensify as it battles the strong westerly wind shear. And that ends our video update for today. If you do live in northern Luzon, Taiwan, and the Okinawa Islands, continue to closely monitor the developments of Jalawat. Um, there are still some uncertainties and uh, model inconsistency inconsistencies. I'm sorry, in the forecast tracks, but the consensus uh, does show a track near Taiwan in the next few days. Continue to check out Pegasus as well for the latest forecasts and also the signal warnings uh, issued by the agency and again JMA and finally the Central Weather Bureau uh, for our Taiwanese residents. Stay safe, guys. Bye.